How peculiar it is, the parallels between drops of water on the beige plastic shower curtain on a night where you wish you had the balls to end it, and the clouds. I'm an atheist, but I prayed that night, not necessarily to God, but to anything that could be listening. The universe, fate, whatever, I needed to be heard. Numb is all I felt for a while now. It's funny how, when you're in this state, you seem to see the world without filters. But back to the clouds. It's the drops on the curtain that reminds me of the drops in a window, that reminds me of rain, that reminds me of clouds, that reminds me of gravity. Slow moving is the cloud pushed by the wind whose raindrops are pushed by gravity. Slowly is the water droplet on my beige shower curtain on a cold and lonely night pushed by gravity. I could make everything stop, easily, but it would leave behind a mess. Life would go on while for me it would be suspended animation. Frozen forever in time, the raindrops wouldn't fall for me anymore. The clouds would cease to tumble through the sky, the water droplets on my beige shower curtain would no longer gather and fall and gather and fall, but to everyone else I would leave behind trauma. Boss, despair, depression, denial, regret. It would be so much easier if nobody loved me. I could do it so easily, but alas, I remain. My remains carry on, day after day. Damn. What is it that makes it so hard for me to make friends? I know I'm an introvert, but that doesn't mean I want to be alone all the time. At what point does the solitude I crave become the cause of my destruction? Depression is a whirlpool, a thousand feet wide in the middle of an ocean. You're pulled under, twisting, turning, gasping for air. How long you're under, and how deep it pulls you, determines whether or not you make it out alive. People in life rafts yell, you're doing great, just keep your head up, wow thanks, never thought of that. I've been insecure for my whole life, about certain things, they change depending on the year, the time, my surroundings, we focus so much on how we look, why must you judge me on what I'm wearing or my haircut rather than my soul? Pressing inside the clothes, the head beneath the haircut. During my darkest times, I found myself hating the way I looked, so I cut my hair. Short enough that I didn't recognize the person in the mirror as the same one. Close to the edge minutes before. Now I'm empowered by the changes I make with my wardrobe, with my hair, my life. Changes in appearance always seem to stem from either insecurity or empowerment. I always find that moving helps me. Maybe it has to do with the phrases, getting through it, moving on, move past this, and so on. Bike rides, car rides, walking, anything. They say that creative minds often correlate with tortured souls. Maybe it's something in our minds, my mind. It keeps me awake at night, thinking about the magnitude of existence, where we are, what we're doing. Oftentimes, things feel better, and then depression hits you like a smack across the face. Where to go, what to do, it's all relative. Time is relative, fluctuating. Constantly, I feel like I'm getting better, but then I hate my hair, or I feel like my clothes don't fit right. Or I look like a boy. It often occurs to me that my life is a mess. I'm stuck in an endless cycle, day to day, yes. But also, where do I go from here? Pursue a business selling artwork and clothing, or strive for success in the fine arts world? Likely I won't amount to much in either field. But who the hell wants to live a life doing things they hate? Why not give it a shot? Everyone is breathing down my neck. You have to be responsible. 
Think about your future. You don't have the kind of money to pursue an MFA. What would you even do with your degree, though? Do you even have a plan? How are you going to make money when you get out of school? You know you have to pay off your debt, right? Money. It always comes down to money. Who gives a shit about your happiness when you're struggling to stay afloat? Money holds the keys to what you want to do. Often, to be successful is to have money. But my art is my passion, and my passion is priceless. I often look around and think, why does nobody care about art anymore? To me, a simple piece of artwork can change you in ways you can't imagine. My friend and I recently connected over Van Gogh's Café Terrace at night. I simply appreciate it as Van Gogh's best piece and my favorite piece of art. But to her, it was what helped her read in elementary school. She hated reading as a child. But then there came a book with Café Terrace at night on the cover. And that was how her teachers taught her to read, with that one book, that one painting. It changed her life. Back together.